YouTube comment sections have always been a bit rough. Insult hurling, butt hurt abounds, and ignorance is put on parade for all to see. This was especially true attacking religious ideas. Threats of hell and misunderstandings of basic science and evolution were very common. Some of us, especially people like me who came out of religion, understood what it could do to an otherwise intelligent person. If in discussions we were polite and caring and treated them with basic common decency, the religious people always went away knowing something new with new ideas to think about, only if they followed some basic etiquette. They may not have left their faith, but they could now see things better from our side. This, if anything, seemed to help generate more of a live and let live mindset among religion in the US. There was another wing of atheism that relied on insults and humor. Rudeness and offensive blasphemy was the name of their game. Over time, some began referring to these two groups as good cops and bad cops, as some who use calm logic would educate while some using offensive blasphemy would desensitize many to the shock of having their beliefs questioned. We seem to be making real progress and data shows we still are, as over 20% of Americans now list themselves as religiously unaffiliated and that number is growing every year, especially in younger people. However, as we got bigger and bigger, factions began forming, especially between good and bad cops. We would laugh at videos made by bad cops, but some made videos warning, do you really think that if a disagreement occurs, they won't use the same tactics against you? What turned out to be good for atheism was not particularly good for science and skepticism, as around the end of 2012, cracks in the community became gaping fissures. Most of the polite, educating, calm, skeptical atheists split off to one side, while the loud, gregarious, insulting, and certain bad cops of atheism split off into their own group and began shelling us with attack tactics we didn't have the first clue how to counter. They also brought in and influenced a new generation of young atheists to use their tactics and assume that because they didn't believe in God, that was the same thing as being a skeptic and scientific. Blasphemy became a righteousness in and of itself instead of being viewed as an essential tool that must be protected to allow for truth and questioning to prevail. They learned how to sound sciency and assumed that since they could get access to scientific papers, that they automatically understood how to translate and evaluate the studies, the techniques, and the statistics. We skeptics know our limits in upper level science and will defer to the consensus of the higher ups, just like we did when debating creationists. We are finally regrouping after a few years in the trenches, trying to collect our thoughts on the issues. In a comments section for a climate denialist video, I got into a debate and they used all the same tactics used by radical bad cop atheists. I wasn't as emotionally invested as it's quite possible it was a paid troll by the oil industry. So I was able to analyze the tactics much better. These new denialists use the same tactics creationists do, but then add several more layers of attacks on top. Here's a list of things that they had in common with the creationists. Questioning consensus or casting doubt on it. Questioning the validity of an entire field of research. Accusing you of blind faith or being religious because you don't question what the experts have to say because you understand the limits of your own expertise and trust the scientific process. Attacking a spokesman of the movement, claiming you're blindly duped by them and they are your only possible source of information and reason why you believe. Argue that your evidence will never be enough. Argue that all your evidence has long been debunked, but theirs couldn't be. Attack everything you say about science or academia as conspiracy for more funding or some sort of liberal agenda. Pretend to be just asking questions science won't let you, while not actually researching it. Start a definitions argument, derail conversations, and replace substance with just using insulting attacks in place of evidence. These I was so used to dealing with, but a new wave of tactics sprung up, mostly among my fellow atheists. These included demanding citation on anything you say that is mainstream in science so they sound like the real skeptics. Claiming that they have posted real evidence even if their supposed evidence is completely flawed or cherry picked. Dump a ton of links on you and then demand you sort through every single one and debunk every single one of them otherwise you're being intellectually dishonest. Flat dogmatic refusal to give any ground. Find any nitpicked reason to argue against your data which only an expert in the field could actually do, argue you're blindly parodying stuff, use charged language and claim you're just like creationists, use animalistic dominance tactics, act like disagreement is the worst thing in the world, and agreeing to disagree is the worst sin in the world, and abuse logical fallacy definitions. If you have the evidence, there is zero reason to be a dick. 
unless the person arguing against you is being a loud, obnoxious asshole, and ignoring them or being a cynical dick yourself is really the only way to counter them. Realizing there is no God is just one step at the beginning of a long journey into skepticism. Training yourself to question your own bias and learning to control for them takes years of self-training and humility. Thinking you are skeptical just because you're an atheist is like taking a few martial arts classes and thinking you know kung fu. In place of the rituals of religion, we have to replace it with the rituals of science and skepticism. And evidence is a brutal mistress often telling you things you don't want to hear. Science is an additional level of training that requires years of schooling. You can make some inferences from areas that aren't your field, but you have to pay attention to the consensus and what they have to say, even if you don't like it and be incredibly conservative about your certainty. You can't discredit a field of academia just because you don't agree with it, unless a large group of other fields are pointing out inherent and blatant bias and the use of improper controls and charged language, like what has happened often in the evolutionary psychology field. You can't take a soft science and completely reject it just because you took an intro class in that field. The entire purpose of that class is not to show you the mountains of evidence they have, but to act as a cliff's notes so that you can take deeper classes if you want to later. I made a video my first year called, Opinions are for people who are informed. However, what is most dangerous is not ignorance, but the illusion of knowledge, as Hawking said. Many also consider themselves a humanist just by being an atheist, and many have never even read what the tenets of humanism even are. We're doing a grave disservice to the new atheist generation who think that because they've given up God, all these new titles now define them, when it takes years of discipline and humility about what you think you know before you can truly wear these titles. There is no hierarchy in atheism, but there are hierarchies and division of knowledge and science, leadership and organization in humanism, and rules and rituals to skepticism. If you consider yourself any one of these titles, please watch the following videos. If you make videos, please make a video summing them up in your own words to spread it to everyone and make it common knowledge. The atheist community is no longer under constant attack, but the skeptic community certainly is. Just like how the definitions of atheism and agnosticism are common knowledge in the community, bias, limitations, humility, and patience need to be known throughout the skeptical community. The atheist community made skepticism sound really, really cool, but humility, patience, training, and research are essential to become a skeptic, but that was ignored because it's not very cool and kind of boring. If we want religion to fall, we have to make sure that dogma does not take its place, or atheism could look more like the communist nations or Robespierre's atheist France. We spent the past decade making blasphemy okay. Now we have to spend the next decade teaching people how to use that right the most effective way and to use it to teach and learn instead of just to bully. An equal mix of blasphemy and humility leads to enlightenment. Wide-scale atheist activism has run its course here on YouTube, and if you count it from 2005, we have made some amazing strides in 10 years. But that is not needed anymore nearly as much as YouTube skepticism activism is needed, at least in the English language. I plan on making a video reiterating the rules of skepticism in different ways every three to six months, as well as a special series on it. And I'm making this a tag video. I want people to make a video discussing or reiterating one of the topics in the bottom bar on skepticism, humanism, science, and communication. Then tag three other people to do the same. We need more of these videos out there to ensure people understand what these terms mean and how we put them into practice, as opposed to just claiming they are to appear better than you. I'm going to be tagging Captain Andy, The Messianic Manic, LJ on YT, and I'm going to cheat here since this is a first tag video, and I know that adjusting your schedule is a little bit more complicated, so I want to tag Jason with his puppets, and I'd also like to tag Dark Matter. If you can't do a video on one of these topics, uh, do it in your Dark Annex series. I hope you will join me in this mission, and thank you very much.